Thank you. Uh, so this talk will is, is about how we are uh, implementing secondary indexes in ScalaDB. So uh, I'm an engineer at ScalaDB, uh, mostly worked on uh, SQL front-end, schema management, and release engineering. And, and like Avi, I was also a movie star in the, in the past. Yeah, so uh, outline of the talk. So first, a little bit uh, explanation of what are secondary indexes. Uh, then comparison uh, of local indexing and global indexing. Uh, and an example, uh, basically, of, of how a secondary index query works. And then uh, when to use secondary indexes and, and then sum, uh, a summary. So uh, everybody uh, obviously knows uh, the Cassandra and, and ScalaDB uh, data model. So basically it, it allows really efficient queries using a partition keys. Uh, but queries using non-partition -parti keys require a full table scan. And uh, secondary indexes are basically a mechanism to, to allow, allow querying using a non-partition key more efficiently. So to make it a little bit more concrete, if I can use the, so uh, let's assume that we have a table that contains user information. So here in this uh, example, uh, the user ID is basically used as the partition key uh, to basically distribute the, the data around the cluster. And, uh, and let's assume that also that we actually want to query based on the email address of that user, which is a regular column in this, in this case. So local indexing, this is basically how Cassandra uh, does it. Uh, local indexing means that the index is, is stored on the same node as, as the data that is getting indexed. So actually what the Cassandra does, it, it has this uh, hidden node local table, uh, which contains uh, basically the uh, primary keys of the, of the index data, so partition key and, and clustering columns, or clustering keys. And, uh, to actually, for, for our example, so this like high, high cardinality case where you have a lot of uh, unique uh, uh, values that are getting uh, indexed, so an email address, for example, uh, what Cassandra actually has to do, it has to query all the nodes to first figure out where the index is, and, and it, only after that it can actually try to fetch the, the data that you're interested in. And um, so I actually discussed with other people here that uh, that there are other cases for local indexing if you actually know the partition key. Uh, so that can be actually really efficient. You just use the uh, basically local index to change the, the ordering. Uh, but for Scylla, uh, we are uh, starting with global indexing because this is basically, well, so basically a lot of people get, uh, get it wrong how to use uh, secondary indexes. A lot of people assume that the kind of query that, that that I'm using as an example actually would work. So that's why we picked uh, global indexing. And basically for us, because we have a materialized view uh, infrastructure or, or it's in experimental mode now, but, but we can basically, instead of using this hidden table, uh, we create roughly the same thing, but as a, as a, as a materialized view. And they, that basically means that now the index gets distributed around the cluster and the, the, the column the indexed column becomes the uh, partition key, uh, so we can actually quite efficiently uh, figure out where the index is. And uh, actually for ScalaDB, the implementation is quite lightweight. It's, it's the heavy lifting is actually done by the materialized view and, and, and work by Nadav and, and Duarte, basically. So back to the example. So the schema looks uh, looks like this. So you have the user uh, table, user ID, and 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 we're interested in the email, uh, or searching by the email. So first thing we would do, you would create a secondary index on the query column. So it's like the syntax is exactly the same as with Cassandra. So you create an index on the user's table uh, for the email column. And basically under the hood, uh, we create a materialized view. So because of the materialized view, syntax is actually quite verbose. So I translated it into how it would look like as a table. So basically, here, it's just an inverse of, of, of the, the user table. But it's worth noting that we don't have the columns here. So we only have uh, the necessary uh, uh, primary key component. So in this case, we only have the uh, partition key, which is the user ID. So when the query that uh, we are up, uh, want to execute, uh, so select everything from users where email is user uh, at example.com. So the driver will send uh, this query to a coordinator node. So in, in our example, it's, it's uh, node number seven. So 
that coordinator will actually figure out that, okay, there's a secondary index uh, for the email column. Uh, actually, this is done at query preparation time, but, but anyway, so the query actually gets translated into uh, this kind of a query, which actually now index, uh, queries the materialized view. So we select the user ID, which is the partition key of, of the table that we actually are uh, searching for, and, and basically what we get back is, is just a bunch of uh, user IDs, so parts of, uh, basically a set of, of uh, primary keys, and then we do the actual select on the base table. And basically that's it. So when to use secondary indexes, especially uh, the, the kind of uh, implement implementation that we are going for. So one of the benefits is that secondary indexes are sort of transparent to the application. So you have always full access to the whole uh, data of your, of, of, of your table. So if any column that you want to query for, uh, you basically have access to that. And uh, for materialized view, you, you could do the same, or you would do the same thing, but you then have to, at materialized view creation time, decide which columns you actually want access to, which can sort of become cumbersome from the application developer point of view. So basically, secondary indexes, uh, as we are going to implement, that, implement them, uh, have less storage overhead and, and, and cheaper updates than materialized views, depending on your use case, of course. But because we only update uh, or need to update uh, the materialized view for when the keys change. So if, if the actual columns change, we, we, there's no, no sort of bookkeeping required. But uh, it's also worth noting that the read performance will be worse than with materialized view because of the one extra hop, which um, I explained in the, in the uh, scenario. So as a summary, secondary indexes provide a mechanism to query using a non-partition key, and we use a different approach than Apache Cassandra. We are targeting experimental version in Scylla 2.2, and then GA once all the issues are sort of fixed. And this feature really uh, depends on the GA of, of materialized view views, and, and that's also uh, in the future. And there's actually not yet a blog post on secondary indexes. It's, it's written, but Philip, you need to publish it. <laughs> Thank you.